guys working on the fireplace now on the Handy Life. You can see that we've got a pretty much a bare wall around our fireplace. So what we're going to do is build a mantle with some posts that go down to the floor. Uh, I have a design in mind. I'm going to kind of walk you through it a little bit real quick. The first thing we need to do is build some structure on the wall to be able to support the coverings that we're going to put over those and attach to those um, bits of structure. So this is where one post is going to go and it's going to be wrapped with some poplar. I'm actually going to use a um, quarter, a three quarter inch thick poplar, poplar boards to cover this. I could use pine, but I was just liking the way the poplar looked. It looked a lot smoother um, and it's probably going to finish pretty good. So then this side, of course, we're going to have a, a board here as well. The way I'm attaching these, because I don't have a stud in the wall anywhere near this location, is with toggle bolts. So I've got some three inch toggle bolts that are going through here and we'll have the little uh, flipper on the back that's gonna pull it up and, and cinch it up to the wall. I will put some liquid nails behind here as well, just to give it a little added measure of, of holding there for, for long life. Um, then we will go across here with the mantle. I'm gonna build some structure here to attach those pieces to as well. And the last thing we'll do is, is paint it and get it going, uh, get it finished. And then we'll come back and the, the final thing will be to actually tile out the, the internal part here that lines the outside of the fireplace. So I'll show you this in time lapse portions and little bits and pieces as we can go. But you'll, the first thing you'll see me, see me do is messing with the toggle bolts on this side. I've already attached this side, so it, it's got a nice firm bolt. It's, it's ripped down to, to length, uh, to, to the width that I wanted. And these are the side pieces. So first we're gonna glue it. We're gonna be the glue down the side where the front's gonna attach on. And this front is a shade less than five inches. It's gotta be a prescribed width because we want it to fit snugly on the two x four on the wall. If it's too big or too small, too small it won't fit, too big it'll have too much play and it'll mean I'll have to actually deform it to attach it to the two x four properly. So I don't want to do that. So I have it to where it's a nice snug fit, it's the right width. So we'll drop this on our bead of glue in approximately the right spot. I'm gonna come back and I have in this gun, I'm gonna go ahead and put inch and a quarter Brads, make sure we're empty on brads that are two inches. <clears throat> Put our inch and a quarter brads in here. That's gonna give me about a half inch of brad into the board I'm attaching to. So now we're gonna line it up real good. The better you line it up, the less work you have to do later to eliminate this seam because there will be a seam here that you're gonna have to work with and fix. So it's, it's well aligned. We'll drive a brad up top and then we'll move down to the opposite end. Make sure it's lined up nicely. And we'll throw a brad in here. And then do the same in the midsection. you drive your brads straight down too so that the brads don't come poking out the side and really mess up your your board so I think I just need one more in this side there we go and we'll do the same thing on the other end, we'll turn this board around. Put our B 
be the glue. And we'll attach this one. Drop it on there. Line it up. Put our bread in the top and bottom. This is going to be our column. Take this sticker off. What I was saying was the 2x4 needs to fit this, this opening really well. And it should. Like I said, it's a snug fit. You can hear me sliding it on there. Push it right up. Looks good. So we're going to change to two inch brads and attach this baby to the wall. Make sure we're empty on the one and a quarter. Ryobi 18 gauge brad nailer. Been having this thing for a few years and it's, it's proven to be a good tool. So what I'm doing is driving these brads into the side, through the poplar, and down into the 2x4 that's attached to the toggle bolts. And do the other side. Applying pressure and putting it up, pushing it snug up against the wall. And that's a wrap on the columns. We're gonna do some other work to dress these up, but that's the start of it. All right, y'all, moving right along. I've got a board put across the top here. I've actually glued it down and bratted it already. I'll tell you a little bit about this board. This board is gonna serve as the bottom of the mantle. Um, so this is the bottom covering. I'm gonna build some structure over it and then we'll be able to attach the front and the top of the mantel piece. And there's some, some trim pieces that are gonna go on here as well. Um, but one thing about this, the length, you wanna keep in mind is, for me, I went, so this sticks out about two and eighth of an inch away from the front face of the pillar. Two and an eighth inch away from the front face of the pillar on that side too. So I wanted to make sure that my overhang over the side of the pillar was also two and an eighth of an inch just so that proportions seem right, and I'm all about symmetry, so that's, that's why I did that. We're gonna end up putting some moldings down here too, so once the moldings are on, all the spaces, all the overhangs will be consistent and look the same. Um, to me, that's really important uh, in, in designing a piece like this. So like I said, this is the bottom piece. We're gonna put some structure here, and I'll time lapse it as we go through some of that. This uh, piece here. So 
I built this piece to be the height that I wanted the covering to be over this part, and then the mantle top is going to sit right on top of here. I attached it to my 2x6 that you saw me put on the wall in the time lapse video using uh, pocket holes. Again, pocket holes are oftentimes the easiest way to attach things that need to be butted together like this. So I put pocket holes along the length. You may not be able to see them there, but they are, uh, they are holding it there. And then attaching this allowed me a lot more area for which to attach the bottom of my covering here. So I drove a couple of screws up through the bottom um, up here to attach it. And now the next piece is going to be to make to put this big covering on over here. So it's going to sit on here like this. And yeah, I got it coming just about to the top of the framing. The framing might be a little higher, but that's okay because we're going to put a piece of molding here anyway. Um, to wrap it up. So yeah, it's coming up to the height that I want. And yeah, looking, looking good so far. And like I said earlier, with the bottom piece, with this bottom covering, it was very important that I cut it so that everything was symmetrical around here. Well, the same thing goes for this framing. So I want, I want this reveal to be consistent across the entire length. If it's sloppy, if it's not the same on both sides, it's gonna be noticeable. So what I did was I used this scrap piece of block that I have, put it along the edge, and I was looking for a half inch reveal along the whole thing. Turn the corner and slide it along the edge. And yes, I'm getting a consistent reveal along the whole mantle. I'm not getting quite a consistent one here, so I may shave down this edge just a little bit. Whoops. Just a little bit, I'll shave down this edge so that the reveal is more consistent because I can see it, it bulging out a little bit right here, just ever so slightly, so. But I'd like to take care of that. All right, we got the front covering on. It's, it's starting to look a little bit more like a mantle now. Um, now we just have the top piece. I've got it right here. I'm going to set it on here. And I had to shave a little bit of the back of the top piece because of the waviness of the wall. Pretty normal. And I want a nice even overlap on all sides. pieces. I've already cut them. So what I do is I, I just mark the, I put the whole strip of base cap on here, mark it with a pencil so I don't take measurements. I, I mean, I, I feel like I get a lot better results uh, a lot faster just by putting it on there and marking directly on the, on the piece that I'm going to cut. I'm going to attach it with the 23 gauge pin nailer. 
just so that I have smaller holes to fill later and it's gonna look hopefully uh, seamless that it won't be any any holes or anything in here so let's do this Yeah, this is some kind of, uh, it's not polystyrene, maybe it is. Obviously it pulls off super easy, so I may actually have to back it up with some adhesive as well. Because that came right off of there. Alright, change it up. Let me pull those, those two, two uh, pin nails out. All right, cool, let's see if we can get these out without causing any damage. At least not causing damage on the part that's gonna be visible. Yeah, it comes out of that soft poplar pretty, pretty easy. So they both come right out. I'm gonna use some wood glue. This should this should do it just fine. I'm gonna just put some down in the crack. And I'll just have to keep in mind that I can't really play with this too much until the glue until the glue dries. Can't really bump it. Get all the pieces on there, make sure everything's gonna fit up nicely. Come back, put our glue. Oh, that's a nice fit. Gotta love it when it's like that. Literally no gap or anything. That's awesome. All right, and the last piece will go sliding in right here. Yeah, like I said, we won't we won't do too much playing with that for the moment. But yeah, that's gonna dress it up real nice. And of course, this is all gonna get painted at the end once I fill all the all the nail holes. So we're gonna do the other side. I've got those pieces cut. We're gonna do the bottom sides of the posts. Uh, the, sorry, the top sides of the post where it meets the mantle. And then we're gonna do a couple of other things like. Uh, probably put some kind of detail on these edges with a router, trim router, to, uh, to dress them up as well. Not sure if that's gonna be some fancy bit or just a chamfer or, or, or round over or, or what, but I'll think about it. because of uh, lack of storage on my phone. So let me tell you what I was just doing. I was uh, attaching this cove molding together. You can see it's now in place. Um, what I was doing at that joint there was applying, the, applying some CA glue. CA glue to allow the joint to be made, made up before I nail it in place. Because if you don't make up the joint, oftentimes if you shoot the brads in, the, the piece will move a bit and you'll end up with a crack at the joint. Whereas if I glue them first with this super nice super glue with the accelerator that makes it dry super fast, I end up with a nice joint. I mean, that's, that's as good as you're ever gonna get it. So I love the way that came out. 
And I like that detail quite a bit. Um, I was thinking about dressing it up a little bit more and putting another piece of molding here, but I really don't think it needs it. I, I've looked at it a couple times. My wife has looked at it, and she gets the ultimate um, ultimate say in matters of, of beauty. And she even agrees that it looks good right now, so we're going to keep it that way. As you can see here, I've also taken that router bit, that, that trim router, and I've just put a chain for here. It's about, I guess, about a quarter inch. Uh, in on each side so it's a 45 degree chamfer of the edge and yeah I, I just marked out where I was going to stop the bit so it's consistent on both sides uh, I think it was four inches from the molding here and maybe three and a half from here it's random just what I thought looked good so I've also gone and you can see I've caulked I've caulked uh, the mantle so everything looks um, Looks built in and well attached to the wall. There's no cracks or anything that are going to be visible later. And what I'm doing now is doing some final sanding. So I've got a few spots I noticed as I was doing the initial sanding. I noticed that there was a few spots where this seam is up the side that were especially uh, just prominent when I run my finger across. And anything that you can feel like that that's not perfectly smooth is going to really be pronounced um, whenever it comes time to look at the job after you've, you've painted it. So now's the time to fix things like that. The time to fix it is not <laughs> later because you're going to be trying to remove paint and you're not going to be happy with the results. So even though it takes a little bit more time, all this prep work and stuff, I've said it in, in videos past, this is the part that actually takes some of the most time, usually for me at least, filling all these nail holes and doing all this caulk work. Uh, with the sprayer, this whole thing to paint is gonna gonna be done in no time. The prep work for that, putting up plastic and thing, and that takes a little while. But once you get to spraying, man, it's fast. So anyway, do the job that you can now. Do it as best you can, and and you'll have less issues later. So what I like to use is a sanding sponge. Uh, that works pretty well. I just have a piece of, of 320 grit. Um, paper as well, so real fine, and that's what I'm gonna pass on here for the last the last pass. If I have to, I have my my uh, oscillating sander as well. If if something is particularly difficult or it's it's causing me a pain that I don't want to deal with, uh, other than that, I'm just gonna proceed along like that, and I will. Get back to you probably when I've started to tape it out and prepared it for uh, for painting, which is probably going to be in a couple of days because I have a few jobs um, going on kind of simultaneously right now, and I'm trying to get them all to the painting stage so I can paint once instead of having to clean clean my sprayer um, two, three, four, five, six times. Um, I'd rather just spray out the primer once, clean the sprayer, and then spray the final uh, two coats on everything and then call it a day. So that's what I'm targeting. So I'll pick up with you later. All right, we're all taped out. It is go time with the paint. semi-gloss white and here's what we have um, this is the mantle I, I love the finish this sprayer has, has done its job time and again we sprayed this mantle these other projects that you've seen uh, closets we've, we've sprayed the entire exterior of the house all the siding we have outside um, all the doors all the baseboards and that hundred and eighty dollar sprayer I think is, uh, is still kicking right along so pretty Pretty impressive to see, and hey, definitely worth the money. A um, couple things about this. I do love the way it came out. I love all the details. You probably remember me talking a little bit about this distance here underneath from the pillar to the edge of the um, bottom side covering for the mantle, and then the, this side of this pillar to, the, to this edge, and you remember me wanting them to be the same, right? Well, them being the same means that, 
as long as I continue that trend all the way up, my corners all the way up the mantle will line up. So if someone is sitting 45 degrees away and looks at the mantle, they're gonna see the, the post here lines up all the way, all the way through the, the cove molding we have here, all the way to the top. To me, that's a detail that is really important. If I made this board too long, that wouldn't be the case. If I had made this too short, that wouldn't be the case. Uh, if this wasn't in the right spot, that wouldn't be the case. So it's these little details that to me matter. We have a couch about 45 degrees away just behind the camera. So when someone's sitting at the couch and look over at the mantle, everything's straight. There's nice sharp lines all over the place. To me, that's beautiful. Um, so I'm, I'm stoked with the way this came out. The next job we're gonna do, and I'll show you this one, is we're gonna put some marble um, stone. It's, they're in like little, maybe two by three inch little rectangles and they're in a mosaic um, sort of a pattern with the mesh on the back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this in place and that'll be a, another video, but once that's done, it's gonna look awesome. All right, I'll give you some up-close shots.